So my name is uh, Elisabeth Dog, and I'm from the Stockholmslands Museum, the County Museum, where I work with collection strategies. I have a focus on uh, digital collecting. Uh, I have a background as a photographer at different museums, but since 2010, my focus has been on de developing the photography collections at the County Museum. And first, I just want to say a few words about my museum, because we recently became a digital first museum. And that means that we do not have any collections of artifacts or objects, and, and we never did, actually. Uh, and we don't have our own facilities for exhibitions. Uh, but we do have photography collections, and they're both analog and digital born. Um, and the assignment that we have from our main funders, the region of Stockholm, is to use digital means for outreach. So, among other things, we make digital exhibitions for our um, web, we write blogs and we make pods, and we produce apps and digital walks. And um, last weekend, we even hosted a, a flash mob, uh, which is on YouTube. But we still have a similar message mission to other regional museums, that is collecting, processing and disseminating cultural history and heritage, art and handicrafts of our region. So at my museum, we began with user-generated collecting al already in 2011, when we launched Samtidsbild or Contemporary Images, which is our uh, platform for digital collecting. We realized that the time had come to democratic, democratically open up our collections and give people a voice and let them take an active part in building the collections. So on Samtisbil, people can upload any image of their choice. It has to be digital born and the contributor needs to have some kind of connection with our region. So today the collection uh, holds more than 4,000 photographs from a bit more than 400 photographers. Um, and we have used mixed methods of outreach, sometimes addressing certain topics or communities, but always keeping Samtis Build open for anyone to contribute at any time. So Samtis Build is one of the foundations of the research project that I will continue to talk about now. So getting back to today's presentation, I will focus on the research project collecting social photo. I will talk about social digital photography and different methods of collaborating and collecting using examples from the case studies that we have made in the project. And I will end by introducing a web app for collecting. So the Collecting Social Photo is a three year long Nordic project researching how museums and archives can change how we work with photography collections in the age of social media. And the partners of this project, uh, it's the Nordic Museum, the Stockholm County Museum, the Finnish Museum of Photography and the All Boys City Archive in Denmark. And the research partner is the Department of Social Anthropology at Stockholm University. And then, without funding, there's no project. So we say thank you to Riksbanken's Jubileumsfond. Um, this is our third year and the project ends in March next year. So social media in combination with smartphones have profoundly changed the photo and also photographic practices. And the social digital photograph challenges museum and archival practices in many different ways. For example, it, it's the trustworthiness of the social photo. Uh, as you know, it can be ma manipulated and um, there are issues with uh, copyright and then, of course, fake news, as we all know about. Um, and then we have the presence of non-standardized formats and low res pictures. Uh, and also the collection databases inability to host complex digital objects that usually have several layers of information. But one might ask, why should we even bother to collect this thing we, we, we call social digital photography? Well, never before in the history of photography have so many people photographed and shared so much of their everyday lives. 
So the social photos, they have by far outnumbered and replaced analog photography. And yet we fear that these images will not be available for future gen generations, as they are either locked into personal accounts on social media or at, at risk of being deleted or lost in cloud services. And recently we have actually seen examples of, of digital born material either being deleted by social media platforms or they have simply just lost it. And one striking example of, of this is um, MySpace. And they claim that they have lost all data that were uploaded before 2016 due to a failed migration. So all music created and shared that wasn't backed up by the user is lost forever. So some even say that we are entering or living in a digital dark age. So despite this ocean of photos around, there will be no shoeboxes of grandpa's old photos for us to collect in the future. And the, and, and the social media companies, they are under no obligations to save our mem memories. So what signifies the social digital photograph? Well, it differs from, from the physical object uh, that are common in our collections. Um, a major difference is, of course, the, the massive increase in participation and the number of photos that are shared. The networked social digital photograph is dependent of its context. It's an assemblage of, of the motif, the ge geodata, text, emojis, likes, shares, and the, the network that it is shared on. So everyday social photography today can first and foremost be regarded as a form of communication where the visual resembles words and language. And it is ephemeral regarding the changing practices, but also at risk of being deleted or locked in. So social digital photography can be regarded as cultural heritage, much in the same way as analog photography. It is used online in telling stories, sharing values and expressing culture. And because of its, of its abundance and common use, the social digital photograph is an imprint of our contemporary society, though very much in need of its context in order to provide value. And this calls for a change of work practices for us at museums and archives. We have to become more proactive and collect in real time. And most important, we have to do it in collaboration with the photographers, the producers of this content. So social media photography has been subject of publications, extensive research, and even some exhibitions. But actually collecting is very still very rare. So in order to gain insights into the uh, challenges and solutions regarding collecting, we decided to conduct a series of case studies in the project. So we have made 11 different case studies divided into three overarching teams, themes. Um, it's places, visual and social practices, and viral events. And these themes, they de derive from the different missions and collection policies at our uh, museums and archives. And the insights and the lessons learned from, from the case study have been compiled in a set of recommendations and best practice uh, on how to collect that will be published in an anthology in March next year. So in these case studies, we have basically tried out three different methods of selection. That is user generated, where the photographer makes a choice on what to con contribute with, and uh, curated, where the staff identifies a gap in the collections and reaches out to a community or to an individual. And then we have mass harvesting, uh, which was something that we were very much inspired by at the beginning of the project, but we, we soon realized that uh, it was more or less impossible for us to do. Legally, as the social media platforms such as Instagram do not allow scraping uh, anymore, and ethically, as people could actually not imagine that a museum or archive would uh, pull their photos and metadata from their social media accounts and then add them into our own 
collections um, without them saying yes. Um, but we have, however, uh, collected large amounts of metadata in one of the case studies that I will talk about later on. And we use this as more or less supportive documentation for the photos that we collected. Um, and broadly speaking, we have tried out two different methods of collecting, um, where the first compares to working in a more or less ethnographic mode, where we have used um, participatory observation, but also production online, and we have combined it with interviews and image analysis. Um, and here's where longer collaborations can be established on a more or less one-to-one -one basis with the, with the contributors. And one example of this is the Insta Suomi from the Finnish Museum of Photography. And this project had a focus on visuality and on Instagram practices. Um, they wanted to understand more about the personal choices made by people sharing on so social media. And the aim was to collect a concise but varied and visually interesting collection of Finnish Instagram in 2018 and they wanted to have rich contextual information. And they also wanted to engage new audiences. Um, and the main focus was in understanding Instagram culture itself. So this is what they did. First, they invited their audience to a meeting at the, at the museum to discuss Instagram culture. And secondly, they reached out uh, by using uh, the, the museum Instagram account, asking people for to um, suggest genres and individuals that they felt that the, muse that the museum should document. And they received hundreds of suggestions. Um, and they selected a couple of study participants um, and they were invited to the museum and they were interviewed and they used photo elicitation as a method where you use the photos and talk about them. The study participants were then asked to propose a representative selection of their Instagram photos to be added to the museum collection. So they added the original photo to the collection uh, and as documentation supporting the photo, they also saved a couple of screenshots where they could also see the comments and likes. And in this research project, we have collaborated with the photographers and we have their consent for uh, collecting photos. But it is equally important to try to preserve the context of, of where the images were shared. Uh, otherwise, it will not be understood in the future when the social media platforms are no longer around. And making screenshots was the best option we, we had at this. So in Insta Suomi, a combination of uh, user-generated and curated selection methods was used. And co-curation with the audience allowed the museum to test and evolve ideas on what to collect and from whom. And by reaching out on Instagram, they engaged, they managed to engage new audiences. And the co-curation resulted in a much wider and varied collection than what could have been obtained through a more traditional acquisition or curatorial process. And the image by, by this photographer, Lotta Sulin, she has actually, they made an exhibition of her Instagram photos at the museum as well. Another example of long-term collaboration and user-generated collecting is the case study Christmas in Allboy. Uh, and this was conducted by the Allboy's archives. It has been running since 2012, actually, and it began with the archive identifying a lack in their holdings of modern depictions of Christmas celebration. And they were also looking at experimenting with new forms of user involvement in the collecting process and also uh, digital curation methods using a hashtag. And at the time, in 2012, there were no other examples of museums or archives collecting from Instagram. So the Allboy City Archive decided to, to launch the hashtag Christmas in Allboy on Instagram. And they combined it with a series of physical activities like hosting Insta walks, account takeovers and competitions. 
And they also cooperated with local organizations and media in order to gain visibility for the Instagrammers. Um, during the course of the case study, the archives discovered that by using a hashtag as a method for collection and selection, they could actually build, build a digital community. And it also motivated users to participate and to donate photos, and it encouraged others to do the same. And after some time, the hashtag actually became viral and had a life on, on its own, without people, with people using it without knowing that it had been originated by the archives. So the benefits of running a long-term project is the possibility to cover how practices and motifs and user behaviors change um, due to, to the changing affordances of the social media platform. And each year, the archive approached a number of participants, asking them to contribute with their photos to, to, to the archive. Uh, but just as with Insta Suomi, it was a manual and quite tedious work because there, were, there was no dig digital platform in place where the contributors could upload their photos. So they had to do it by email and signing uh, contracts and stuff like that. The second method of collection that we have tried is um, rapid response collecting, where a museum or archive acts on an ongoing event in society. And we have used this method when we have collected from viral events that had a very quick progress. Um, and one insight from the case studies that we have made is that rapid response collecting combined with agile work methods is particularly useful when it comes to collecting from so social media. Um, we were only a few months into our project uh, we began in 2017 when a terrorist attack hit Stockholm in April 2017. Uh, and, but we still decided to launch two rapid response collecting initiatives. One was made by the Nordic Museum and the other one by the Stockholm County Museum in collaboration with the City Museum. And neither of us had collected from sudden traumatic events before using dedicated online collecting tools nor had we set up online collecting initiatives with such short notice. And we had not used hashtags for framing collecting initiatives. So the Nordic Museum, they targeted the hashtags Open Stockholm and Pray for Stockholm that people used after the attack to communicate and share photos. And they published a sponsored post <clears throat> sorry, and asking people if they had shared any images uh, using these two hashtags. And they all asked them to contribute the photos to the collecting website minnen.se uh, and answer a few questions in a survey. At the Stockholm County Museum and the City Museum, we focused on collecting photographs connected to the attack, but also people's stories and experiences from the attack. Um, we asked people to contribute photos to Samtidsbild, and written stories and text con conversations, SMS, um, they were directed to a tempor temporary Tumblr blog, uh, which was a bit confusing. Uh, so sometimes the photos ended up there and we had the text con conversations on Samtidsbild. Um, later on, we also collected screenshots from the photos that were shared with us. Um, and outreach Outreach was made through a tra tra traditional press release. Um, on both sides, people were allowed to upload any image of their choice. And we did, we did not make any active selection at all. So in total, um, 600 photos were contributed. And on both collecting web websites, the content is not moderated. Uh, before it is published. And this is because it is important for the photographer that when they have uploaded a photo, uh, they need to get some kind of receipt that the museum has actually received it. Uh, and this did put 
an extra strain on us because we constantly had to monitor the contributions to make sure that there were no sensitive content. But we also collected metadata using a third party service called Notified. So we downloaded metadata from 7,000 of the 10,000 images that, that were posted publicly on Instagram uh, under, under the hashtag OpenStockholm. And in this graph, we can see how the published posts on Instagram peaks three days after the attack, and then they decline rapidly. Uh, an insight from this is that sharing images online occurs during a very short time span. And this makes it very urgent to, to use rapid response collecting in re real time and not wait for years until collecting as we normally do. Uh, we also asked people a year later if they had saved the images um, in their phone from that day. And now I don't remember the exact percentage, but from this um, event, a large number of people had actually saved their photos. But when we asked in other case studies where there were more like everyday photography, um, people did, did not save them. So if we want to collect, we have to do it in re real time. And in this case study, we learned that different contexts, <clears throat> such as different web interfaces, the questions we ask, the outreach we make, and the scope of the collecting organization, they provide different affordances. So a majority of the photos that, that were uploaded to, to the Nordic Museum are from, from the spontaneous memorials that formed after the attack. And at Stockholm uh, County Museum, where we did, did not specifically ask for social media photography, there was also an element of citizen journalism with photos from the attack itself. Um, I could just add that there, we did not have any sensitive material that were uploaded. Uh, there were on minnen.se, there were a couple of photos, but they were sent to the archive and they were not made uh, public, um, where you could see the, some of the victims. And on Samtesbild, there was an image of the truck where it hit the wall into the department store and was caught on fire. Uh, but there were no sensitive material there either, but it was really nervous days for us and for everybody, of course. So we learned from this case study that social media photography functions as both instant communication during and after the attack, as well as memory. And that people actually wish to contribute to our collections. Social media became an extension of the traumatic event, and people shared images not only to share their experiences, but also to try to grasp on a more personal level what had actually happened. And in several of the other recent terrorist attacks around Europe, museums and archives, they have collected objects from the spontaneous memorials. But in this case, we realized that photos that are shared on social media, they play an equally important role in the memorialization of the attack and are therefore equally important for us to collect. So to conclude, I will now return to the reasons why museums should engage in user-generated collecting. And then I will end by saying a few words about the digital, digital collecting tool that we have created. So what are the benefits for the museum or archive to collect user-generated gen photos? Well, by collaborating with photographers, they become stakeholders of the collections and consequently they become or stay re relevant to them. Um, and museums and archives, we can reach new audiences. And collecting user-generated material is part of a democratic process where more voices are engaged in building the col collections. And in the end, this will lead to more representative collections. And collecting in real time allows for rich context and better metadata, which is added value for the collections. So now, because now we have the chance to get the information that we know that we need, um, as opposed to 
the older photography collections that we have with lots of portraits, for example, with people that we don't know who they are. And now we can get this information from, from the source. But what's in it for the user? Why should they co contribute? Well, we made a survey in the project and the answers from that survey, as well as answers from the interviews, um, people said they were positive to the idea of offering their photos to museums and archives um, because people see the, the benefits of us being stable and long term and thus more sustainable than commercial platforms. Uh, and therefore we are more safe. So by contributing their photos to the museum or archive, they will live on into the future. They are preserved. And in the case studies, uh, we also noticed that there actually is a wish among par participants to be co-creative and they want to participate. And we should use this force, <laughs> I think. So in order to be successful in use of generated collecting, we need to have a human-centered approach. We need to create relevant and engaging dialogue through carefully planned engagement initiatives uh, with communities and individuals. And we need to invite these communities and also individuals to become co-curators and co-producers. Um, and we need to en encourage curators and archivists to act more as facilitators rather than gatekeepers. And we need to maintain a responsive work pra practice, allowing for quick responses in a rapidly changing environment, as well as building these long-term collaborations with ambassadors. Um, and we need to experiment with different kinds of outreach using both uh, tra tra traditional press but also try to use sponsored posts on so social media um, and, of course, combine it with physical meetings. And if the aim is to um, collect user generated content from social media, it is essential that the staff is digitally literate and also active on social media in order to connect with, with people, but also to have the right tonality. Uh, and these are um, things that will be in included in the recommendations that is one of the outcomes of this project. So finally, I would like to present uh, the web app for collecting that we have developed. Um, so when asking people to contribute with own photos to the collections, we need to make sure that the process is smooth and easy uh, and maybe a bit fun as well. Um, as we are in fact competing with social media, we have to make people leave social media platforms and go to our uh, platform. Um, and at the same time, we have to make sure that we get enough metadata to support the, the image contextually. And therefore, it is necessary to have some kind of digital tool. Um, and it's also needed in rapid response collecting because there, there's very little time to uh, pr prepare and everything needs to be in place legally and ethically. Uh, in the case of the terrorist attack, when the city museum and, and, the, um, and, and my museum, the attack was um, on Friday afternoon and we made a decision on Sunday to start to collect. And on Monday morning, we, um, we began. We had a meeting and we had the tool in place and we could send out this press re release. So it was very, very quick. And we did make some mistakes with a town blog. But anyway, um, I've already mentioned that at uh, that Nordiska Museet and the Stockholm County Museum, we have digital platforms for collecting and we have used them for several years. So we have used the experiences from these two tools when we have developed this new web app um, and this new, new tool, it connects collecting with disseminating as publicly shared in, in which they are searchable in the web app. And that also becomes this receipt so that when you have uploaded your photo, you can immediately see it there. Um, and it's easy for staff to set up new collecting initiatives. 
So the goal for us is to offer an easy to use, open source digital tool for museums and archives to use at the end of our project. The web app, as for now, it's a working prototype. It's ready to be used, but we want to have more functionalities. Um, so hopefully we will be able to apply more funding and also uh, to continue this work. So the web app today exists in five different versions where we, the participating museums and archives, we have one instance each in our own language. Um, it has been developed by an American firm. And in March 2020, next year, uh, the default version will be available for anyone to download from GitHub. Uh, to be able to test and perhaps continue to de develop. But we are, are hoping that there will be a possibility to get a licensed, customized version further on. But now we are soon wrapping up the entire research project and it will end in March. And we have a conference at the Nordiska Museet, 19th to 20th of, of March. So please, please save the date. And it will soon be possible to, to sign up for this conference. And then we are also launching an anthology with texts about all the case studies that we have made, also about image recognition that we have experimented with, uh, the web app, and of course, the recommendations. But before that, we will continue to run some tests on the web app. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you.